everybody. Ho, ho, ho. We're here to wish you a very Merry Christmas in July. And today we are talking about royal holiday romances in preparation for the new Hallmark Christmas in July movie, A Royal Christmas Crush. We are talking about the many uh, Hallmark royal movies that we've had that are holiday themed. Uh, And we'll probably do a different ranking where we rank the non-holiday royal movies because those are fun too. And I'm film critic Grace Wagner. Terry's here. Hi. How's it going? Pretty good. Yeah. So (laughs) what do you like about the royal movies on Hallmark? Sometimes they get kind of a bit of a bad rap, I think. And uh, what do you think is special about them? And what do you think makes for a really good one? Well, I love them because to I view them as modern day fairy tales mm-hmm. where it's so absurd. Some of these things that they do, like careers, you wouldn't find this in real life very rarely. And I think it's just the outlandishness of it, the absurdity of it. And I think because it's kind of an old school thought, but, you know, when I was little, it's like you dream of that, of becoming a princess. That's just like there's a fantasy element in that, that I, that I love. Mm-hmm. And it's just, I just love the cheesiness of it. I mean that all in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. I think when they work is when they just kind of lean into the fairy tale, like you're talking the Cinderella, they basically yes. are sort of new takes on Cinderella. Yeah. And I think that's when they tend to work more than when they're like pouty Royal person oh, it has boy. a hard life, you know, like, <laughs> That is super in right now. Like, I'm yeah. so sad to be rich, you know? And- yeah. <laughs> like, everyone's <laughs> trying to be Harry. <laughs> Harry is still rich, though. He's yeah, okay. He's still rich. He's yeah. still rich. He's okay. Yeah. You know, he's got beautiful children. He's fine. Yeah. He'll be okay. He'll make it through. <laughs> yeah. He will. Uh, yeah. I, I really do enjoy them for the most part. Uh, it was kind of rough during the period of the royal wedding when we got so many that year i think it was 2018 i think uh i believe so yeah and um we got so many i know uh, and i ate them all up (laughs) that i was uh, it was it was uh, by the end i was a little i was a little ready to move on but um but yeah when they work they work and uh, and I, I really do enjoy uh, the royal movies. Uh, and in particular, we, what do you think? Do you think that the Christmas royal movies are a stronger group or the non-Christmas? I actually think it, it's, uh, Christmas is a little bit stronger because of the holiday, mm-hmm. but I think the non-holiday ones are, can be fun too. They mm-hmm. don't have the limitations that yeah. you have to fit in a Christmas story. Yeah. I mean, I do really love, um, I know you don't like it as much, but I really do love, um, once upon, uh, um, and now all of a sudden the, um, once upon a prince, once upon a prince. Yeah. Once upon a prince. Uh, I just really like how he's like angry gardening. I know. <laughs> like, like I like that. Like, I'm working for her. I don't know. I, it just, I, that one the gardening out. aspect, like, is like, like what that. he wants to be a gardener. <laughs> yeah. I think but, that's what threw me. Yeah. <laughs> but we better get started because we have 11 movies. So uh, we uh, we don't want this to be like an insane long podcast. So we probably won't spend super long. But I found at least I didn't have any of these that I felt real strongly negative about. Like it was more just a kind of a met to, oh, I really like this. Like I had a hard time actually deciding on my lowest because it's not really a movie that I hate. I just thought it was a little boring. Yeah, same. I mean, I found it pretty easy for the lowest ones, but same. They're all they're all very watchable, and there's something yeah. to enjoy in all of them. It really is a good group. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. 
Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. So we have 11 movies. Uh, let's just dive in. What is your number 11? Uh, mine is Once Upon a Holiday, which oh. is Hallmark's first princess movie. Uh-huh. And yeah. uh, I like this one, but it, it's just like, I don't think there's much chemistry. And I really can't like, she's purposely pretending to not remember who she is like and 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 when her purse is stolen. She's walking around for days with this guy. She doesn't change her clothes. I didn't even see her wash her face. But, <laughs> you know, it's just, yeah. uh, it didn't really work for me. But yeah. it's still enjoyable in mm-hmm. an aspect because there's a, uh, Paul Campbell's in it and he's always good. Yeah. I mean, this was interesting because it's the, uh, the male that's the commoner and yes, in a lot of these, it's the, um, it's the woman who's the commoner in the, in with the prince. So that was a little bit different. Uh, and it has a little bit of like a Roman holiday kind of feel. Yeah, to it, I it think. does. Yeah. No uh, accent but, though in this one. Yeah. But I an do accent. agree that I, I don't think that, uh, that she has a lot of great screen uh, cr- cr- presence, uh, yes. charisma. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that they have very good chemistry. I, I'm probably why she's never done any more of these. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I have it a little higher, but uh, but not super, super higher. So, um, okay. Well, my number 11 is a Christmas carousel. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I just thought this one was kind of boring. It didn't really do a lot for me as far as the story or the chemistry or the characters. Um, yeah, I, I didn't rewatch it. I have to say, I didn't really get a chance to rewatch any of these, but that was just my memory of feeling like it was slow and kind of. It is a little slow, but it's, it's wild. And, um, it ranks a little higher on my list, but it's because, um, just the, premise of it is like unique and different like they're mm-hmm. working they're painting carrot they're, they're painting the horses on the carousel yeah. and that's like well that's something new that uh somebody who's going to eventually be king is passionate in <laughs> i can see that i can see that yeah you know like, yeah let me paint these horses <laughs> <laughs> um all right well what's your number 10 mine is royal new year's eve yeah i have that at nine so we're pretty close on that one yeah so um this one is it's it's like one of these traditional movies it's a party planning movie it's a a girl has an ambition and a dream but she's not quite successful Mm -hmm. and it's it's pretty much standard it's okay but there is so much drama with this dress yeah that it's kind of ridiculous you know and I do think though that the dress pays off because a lot of times in these royal movies I'm like eh that's not that good of a dress uh, yeah, this one is actually really beautiful. Pretty good. Yeah, this one is a really nice dress. They really put some effort into that. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it does pay off in the end. But, you know, there's a little bit of chemistry. It, it's okay, but it's more of a old school version of these yeah. stories. Yeah, I mean, I think that the beginning when they're kind of like flirty and she's helping him and a kind of thing like it, that's more fun I, I I appreciate that they kind of leaned into the camp with Cheryl Ladd's character. Oh my gosh, yes, a, she's over the top scared. in a yeah, fun way. She's the star of that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I mean his terrible accent. Oh, <laughs> I know. They should have just done no accent. Yeah. I mean, because these I, are fake countries. So there's no exactly. Reason. That's my point. Like with a uh, uh, Once Upon a Holiday, she doesn't have an accent in there. No one from her yeah. country has an accent. They yeah. just speak with their normal voices. You don't got to work this hard. Yeah, You don't. If you can't do the accent, don't try it. Yeah, It doesn't I, matter. I agree. I agree. I mean, if I I kind of wish we were still having New Year's movies. In fact, this is I know. New Year's. Makes it a little bit unique. 
But, yeah. uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely on the forgettable side. I, like I said, I have it at nine. Um, well, my number 10 is Christmas at the palace. Oh, and the thing that annoyed me about this is that she just left and, and she didn't even like say goodbye. She just <laughs> leaves. And that really annoyed me. <laughs> <laughs> like she should have at least said goodbye especially when you have the little girl i know involved like that is not nice oh, and I, <laughs> I didn't like that uh, um, otherwise it's fine yeah this one's slightly higher on my list because uh i like i told people i love this movie and they looked at me weird and i was like but she's an ice skater that's all i cared about <laughs> it was just Again, the absurdity level. If you can have fun with it, it's good. You know, and she's an yeah. ice skater and he's well, a king, you know, so. <laughs> well, I do appreciate too that they had a really good uh, secondary romance for Brittany oh, yeah, totally. character. That yeah. was fun. But I just was so annoyed at her that she just left. It's like, you didn't even say goodbye. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. It's going to all, you know, they're, she's going to come back on that ice. It's going to be all right. <laughs> <laughs> but Andrew Cooper is extremely dreamy. I know. He should come back for more. Yeah. Um, also, her dress was underwhelming in this movie. The the big, you know, like, ta-da moment was not great. Only and so much a budget can do, yeah. I guess. I just said in my little review at the time, I said, this princess story had a likable cast and pretty good dialogue. Unfortunately, I didn't feel they captured that Cinderella moment when she appears in the ball gown and wows all the guests. Yeah. Also, she leaves without saying goodbye, not <laughs> even a letter. <laughs> it's rude. <laughs> it is, but somehow I was able to forgive that because I'll be like, just let's go back to ice skating. <laughs> I couldn't get over that. <laughs> yeah well what do you have at nine uh mine is a christmas carousel okay so we're pretty close yeah. on these bottom ones i think um okay uh so eight is where i have once upon a holiday so again we're we're pretty close on these uh these bottom ones i i do like some things about this movie i like again the sort of the roman holiday sort of aspects of it yeah and uh i think it's pretty well written um, it's a Dabrowski's uh, one, I think. Yeah. Oh no, David Golden. Never mind. I was thinking it was a um, to be a Neil Dabrowski, but uh, David Golden. I think it's well written, uh, yeah. and I do like Paul in it. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I think that she's the weak link, which is a problem in a royal movie. You really need. I know loyal. you couldn't really like. I couldn't attach to myself to her. Like I yeah. couldn't feel sympathy for her. You know. Yeah. No. Oh, uh, all right. What's your number eight? Uh, my it's a Royal Queen's Christmas. Okay. Uh, this one I had a lot of fun with. It was yeah. uh funny. It was, you know, uh quirky. Um, mm -hmm. great uh supporting cast, great cast, but um, a little lower because this guy is like. <sighs> I just want to play jazz. I don't want to be a king, you know, and, <laughs> and, and his family pressures him so much at the end of the movie, they just shrug it off and like, Hey, you've got a cousin. And I'm like, what, <laughs> you know, I, <laughs> well, what do you mean? You know, but I mean, the romance is great. It's a likable, likable cast. It's fun. I do have it a little bit higher. Uh, I really enjoy the, um, valet or the whatever that guy is oh yeah the, yeah that was really fun oh that poor guy he, he went through it yeah when he had to ride the train when he had to <laughs> ride the to, subway yeah getting <laughs> to queens is an ordeal this <laughs> poor guy <laughs> well that's what happens when you ride the subway yeah the subway is 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 very uh yeah i, I had one time a guy his um armpit was right above my head <laughs> the whole entire time. But it was so, jam we were like sardines. I couldn't yeah. move. Well, you know? my, a friend of so mine- I lives, feel you. A friend of mine actually lives in uh, Jamaica, Queens. And I was trying to get out there last, one of the times I was there and they ended up, the, the stop that I was supposed to get was closed. 
And so I ended up in like the middle of oh. <laughs> like, I don't know what to do. So I, I ended up just getting in an Uber and they take me there. That's like, my, my worst fear. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, because I'm not from New York, but like, whenever I go there, I don't take the subway very rarely. Yeah. I'll like, I'll take the bus. Scary. I'll take a cab, you know, if I can <laughs> hail one. Yeah. Um, but like, it's just, I, it's a, I have too much anxiety for that. Yeah. Well, but I liked everything in this with like their, they both had the same ornament. Yes. And they both, uh, I don't know, there were like little details. I thought they had great chemistry. They did. Uh, yeah. And so this was actually in my top 10 of that year uh, for Countdown to Christmas uh, and Miracles of Christmas. Uh, I, I felt like I enjoyed it more than most. Oh, I liked it too. Uh, it was but, fun. Um, it's but fun. Yeah. Uh, so uh, at number seven, I have a Royal Corgi Christmas. Oh, that's my number six. Okay. Yeah, this one was cute. He was very swoon worthy. I oh hope they keep God. using him. I know. I was like, I had a fan myself for a moment. I was like, whoo. <laughs> yeah, he was very good. So yeah. they understood the assignment on that aspect, you know, to get the swoon worthy guy. Yeah. I, yeah. I, uh, I thought that he played this part so well and they had, I think, decent chemistry. She had an reveal dress, like her dress worked. Oh yeah. It was so pretty. Yeah. And yeah. it was the only thing that worked about that because this movie had, I'm not going to go on a spiel, but like, do you remember the tiaras, these royalty, these Royals were wearing, they would look like miniature tiaras. <laughs> you couldn't see them on their head. They're like, oh my gosh, they went to Walmart and you know, those, uh, plastic aluminum, uh-huh. like toy tiaras <laughs> you buy for your like two-year-olds where they go on top of dolls. That's what they had. Yeah. And I was like, those are not and you can even see the combs of, um, you know, on the headbands, the combs, the teeth that so you could fit it in your hair. So it doesn't. Yeah. Move. The costume jewelry budget wasn't high on this they one. Was, I was like, those are tiaras <laughs> you put on a doll. That drove me nuts. But I loved I'm, everything with the dogs. They're no, so the cute. dogs. This That's because I'm a tiara girl. And a lot of times the tiaras are not good. But the dog saved this movie because <laughs> at the end of the movie, when I saw those worlds come out with midget tiaras, I was like, or very small tiaras. I was like, no. Yeah. Yeah. They, the dogs were so cute. Oh, I know. I love uh, corgis. And, and, and it being just pretty soon after, you know, the queen's passing. Oh, yes. And Perfect how, timing in a yeah, sense. Yeah. Yeah. So it she was, loved it corgis. Was, yeah. Yeah. So that was really good uh i enjoyed it and hunter's great uh she is. she's a really great they were perfect for hallmark this. yeah again so. another absurd storyline where yeah. a prince who doesn't want to you know take over uh falls in love with his dog trainer so yeah. <laughs> goals you know yeah yeah goals. there you go <laughs> uh, what what do you have at seven uh christmas at the palace Oh, okay. okay. Again, I just love it's the ice skating. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just that yeah. Whole... There, there wasn't that much ice skating though. No, there wasn't, but I just, the idea of it, you know, just, it just enchanted me. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I guess they're trying to do like the sound of music thing where it's like, you left, left without even saying goodbye. <laughs> no. <you Yeah>. kind <laughs> <of thing. laughs> she will show up on you know and then it's like (laughs) it's the close-up of them standing on that fake ice at the end like i skated (laughs) i've come back (laughs) Uh, yeah uh right Uh, okay (laughs) so my number six is uh a princess for christmas and i haven't seen this one in a long time i admit it i so that may it may be higher if I had a chance to revisit it. I remember thinking it was really cute. Um, I like uh, Katie McGrath, Sam Hugan, great cast. Um, Roger Moore, super fun. I remember just thinking this one was solid, entertaining. Um, but yeah, yeah, I ended up at six. Yeah, that's um, one of that's a totally classic sort of version of this story. Yeah, and. Um, it was directed and written. It was directed by Michael Damien, and it was uh, oh, yeah. written by yeah, that. 
it was written by uh, him and his wife, and um, he's forever rock yeah, on. You're right, Michael for me. Janine. Yeah, he's forever rock on. Um, '80s pop song, <laughs> and he's Danny Romilotti from The Young and the Restless. So, yeah, I was a very open when this first came on to support it because I grew up watching him on TV, and and he's yeah. done a bunch of great um holiday movies and-, and this was even before countdown christmas was even a thing i mean this thing this goes back to 2011 it was i think it was the year prior before it started yeah yeah that's yeah. right i think 2012 i think was the first year of countdown to christmas yeah. and i think they had like seven movies the first year something like that i think it was <laughs> less I uh, no, yeah, I think it yet. was seven. Yeah, I think it was seven when they officially started because they used to do like four or five. It wasn't yeah. a lot. No. Hey, this is Jen Johans, host of the podcast Watch with Jen, which delivers a steady stream of great movie recommendations, thoughtful career deep dives, and first rate conversations with film critics, authors, actors, journalists, filmmakers, and more. You can find Watch with Jen wherever you get your podcasts or hear us first at our Patreon at patreon.com slash film intuition. I will have to revisit, you know, Thaddeus and I have been doing those classic Christmas look back uh, episodes. And and I think a, a, a princess for Christmas has got to be on that list of uh, to do. Uh, so uh, what do you have at six? Um. Uh, a Royal Christmas, the uh, one with Lacey Chabert and Jane mm, Seymour. I have that at five. Yeah. So I was debating um, between these two, like which one do I remember better? Which one? Right. And I, I, went, yeah. I don't seem to. I remember when this first premiered. I mean, everybody loved it. It's a favorite. And I was never too keen on it. But uh, a couple of years later, it's grown a little bit more with me. And you know, it's entertaining enough, you know, it's, it's well, I feel fun. like, especially because she's supposed to be a designer, her, oh, yeah. dress and her clothes is were not good no. enough. Those clothes were terrible. But what I remember <laughs> most about this movie is the giant folders jug, because this was a time when all Hallmark movies were sponsored by folders and they would always oh, yeah. have them. And she pulls out, I don't believe it's a can. I believe it's like the jug when they're making coffee in the morning and she pulls out this humongous can that says Folgers on it, you know, yeah, and it's yeah. product placement in all its glory. I love that. And uh, they, that's they what gotten I back to that last year with all those <laughs> gratuitous Campbell soup promo promos that made me laugh so oh. much. <laughs> Oh, it's the best it's, it's the hilarious best. It's the i best. mean it's so terrible that it's funny to me uh I yeah i mean i i jane seymour she's she's delivers what totally. you need for this yeah. um i don't remember this guy hardly at all i don't um, either <laughs> um so if i were to rewatch both these i might swap them uh yeah. princess for christmas and a royal christmas uh, but uh, they both kind of just ended up in the middle for me. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, what do you have at five then? Uh, that's a Royal Corgi. That's what I have at five. A oh, Royal okay. Corgi Christmas. Yeah. So cute. The dog. So cute. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's adorable. Also fun. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Because you got to see it kind of forced them to spend time together with the dogs. Yeah. Lots of flirty moments. It was it's <laughs> yeah. a good one. It's a good yeah. one. So I have a Royal Queen's Christmas at four just because, and I know a lot of people are like, oh, all the like New York humor and Queen stuff was sort of cringe. And I'd agree, but I still thought it was kind of funny too. At the yeah, same time. It is funny. They yeah. really went into it. <laughs> when he's running at the end and he's got what his slippers on when he comes out of the hotel and he gets a little scooter, like to try to catch yeah. her. That's just, that. that's oh, so God. funny. It's so fun. You well, know, and, and then also the end when they both have their ornaments on the tree and yeah. both there, that's really, really good. And I also liked the secondary relationship in this that like they've been, they've been, it seems like living together, dating, whatever, for a long time. She's trying to decide if, oh, if yeah. they want to yeah, get married. Was... Like that was a different relationship for a homework movie to totally. kind of explore. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, the whole thing with the choir and you know that was fun and overall i just 
I thought this was charming. I yeah. it is t- I, it's totally charming. Didn't take itself too seriously, which sometimes can be a problem with these royal movies. This is they it can. can they yeah. can be a little little too stuffy. Uh, and he's like, "You're not making high art here. Let's like I- <laughs> calm down, <laughs> calm down. Uh, you don't have but, to work this hard." <laughs> yeah. But uh, what do you have it for? Uh, one royal holiday. Uh, um. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know people love this movie and I like it as well. It's um, it's a simple premise, uh, but in a good way, yeah. you know, they're stranded and mm-hmm. we really get to see the, they, them connecting yeah. and, you know, a relationship possibly building, you know, it didn't also, it didn't feel rushed. Like mm-hmm. also like where they're at the end, I've known you for two days, but I love you. No, yeah. you know, there's the work was done. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, that one's a really, really good one. You'll see where I have it coming up. <laughs> uh, so number three for me, I have the Royal Nanny. This one was a lot of fun. It was something fresh. It was funny. Uh, it uh, it had good, really good leads. Dan Janot is one of my favorites. He's so yeah. charming in these movies. The kids were cute. The little like pranks that they had them do were were fun uh and uh i liked the these like mary poppins-esque nanny oh, that character. nanny school she that was, nanny school was amazing yeah, she was great amazing um this one I, this one's my number two yeah yeah it was it was a big surprise and uh and you know on the surface it sounded terrible but it, was it did actually- it did sound <laughs> But I went in with high hopes. I was like, it sounds terrible, but I bet you it's good. You know, what I like too about it, it's in alternate England because it's a real place. It's a real setting. I mean, obviously it wasn't filmed in England, but it's a real place, but it's just, there's different royals and all this other stuff. So it's an alternate version. But I like that there was like some kind of realness in that aspect. And the whole yeah. undercover plot was just, it was really funny. It didn't take itself seriously. Right. It knew, it knew the assignment, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. And it was fun. And the whole, like the umbrella as the main defense. Yeah, of the nanny, I like that. That was good. The whole um, nanny, uh, uh, I can't remember the actress's name, but she's a legend, Greta. Uh, I want to say Greta Scotchy. Yeah, Scotchy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so she's a legend. You know, and she popped up in this and I was like, ooh. And, uh, you know, it's mm-hmm. it's hysterical. It's really fun. Yeah. And that's what we need. Sometimes we need these throwaway, just fun movies like this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I liked that he was the, the he was the prince, but he wasn't like next to, no. so there was, there, he wasn't like next in line for the, for the crown. So there wasn't that like. No, his sister was a. Uh, there was no question of him like no there was no question this is a, or something yeah. like that like it was just yeah i'm just happened to be a prince yeah just enjoy and somebody's trying to kidnap me <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah oh that ends when she rescues him i was just laughing so hard <laughs> when she's running in that warehouse yeah. and stuff at the end but it just saved you from the drama of like it, it's do true. i be with this person or or do I uh, fulfill the needs of my people or, you know, all that stuff? Like, exactly. It, it was because just like. Also, it's very refreshing. Nobody has to give up anything in this. Yeah, one. yeah, 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 yeah. That's not, I yeah. agree. So what do you have at three? Uh, a princess for Christmas. Okay. Yeah. 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 It, 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 I really should revisit it because it's cute. Yeah. It's very, it, like when you rewatch it now, it's like old school and it's, Christmas telling and it's fairy taleness and there's something kind of refreshing of that yeah. old schoolness and for you Outlander fans check it out it's got a pre Jamie Fraser there Sam Hewen <laughs> yeah. stars well, as the and, prince and Katie McGrath is like so so beautiful. pretty oh I know my gosh oh. she I mean, does she mesmerizes the screen when she's yeah up. she does yeah I and mean all one, these people are beautiful but she's yeah and this was like I think after she had done Merlin like the uh, very popular TV show uh-huh. back in the day. And so yeah. she was just up and coming as well. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, my number two is crown for Christmas. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have Danica. This one's a classic. This is that when we first started the podcast, this was in my top 12 favorite oh, yeah. Hallmark it's, movies. This uh, one is I my number it. one. 
Yeah. This it, is my number one. Well, I debated. I went back and forth. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, River Henry Jones, he's so worthy in this when he's like riding on that horse at the end. And it was the, yeah, and it was the first time we got a king. I think we've only ever got. Oh, yeah, king. you're right. Yeah. We've only gotten ever, like, we've got princes who will become kings, but this, we've mm-hmm. only ever gotten a king twice. And this was the first time we ever got a king. And mm-hmm. it's just so simple in its storytelling. And it really does the Cinderella right. Because she starts out, she's like trying to support her siblings uh, that she's like, they're kind of their breadwinner. And she gets picked uh, to go over and do this. And, uh, and. But it's uh, it's just, again, the absurdity. It's like, oh, I was a maid in a hotel. Yeah. (laughs) I found this watch and I didn't steal it. And I got fired for it. And I upgraded to become your nanny. You know, (laughs) again, the absurdity of it. There's just something so. When I say simple, I mean that in a, yeah. in a good way. Yeah, simple, straightforward. Yeah. There's an amazing green screen in that movie, and it back in, you know, so it doesn't look as good, which makes me howl every time I see it. Uh, well, and the little know. girl, I think, is just the right amount of of uh, difficult. Exactly, and sweet, like rides that line. It doesn't become too annoying, but uh, endearing, and the relationship between her and Danica's sweet. It is, and uh, and uh, I think it's it's probably Danica's best movie she ever did for Hallmark. Oh, hands down, I would say yeah. so. Hands mm-hmm. down, yeah, yeah. So I have that at two. You have it at one. Yep. <laughs> and your uh, one you have is... at two. Oh, my two. No. Uh was a royal nanny oh right okay good good okay so my number one is one royal holiday yeah. and i'm not gonna lie it is probably heavily influenced by the fact that i'm like a broadway person and it's got yeah. all these broadway people in it uh, <laughs> with aaron tivet who i'm in love with he was so good oh. he was so good so and that good. accent was so oh. good and i love the whole like little side romance, but well, yep. two side romances between yes. Victoria Clark and uh, Lawrence's dad, and then um, uh, uh, Crystal Joy Brown and the mayor loved yeah. that. That was great. I could have seen a whole movie just about them. <laughs> and uh, and Laura Osnes, I do think she is very warm and very likable in these movies. She is. She is. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, and I think her and Aaron had good chemistry, and I love. A, the, the the like a great ending dress reveal oh, very yeah. well done probably the best ever she looked beautiful really worked and then their dance and uh and then the whole like the thing with him and the speech and, and worrying about his speech and I thought that oh, really yeah. paid off and that yeah. really worked and I mean you could just tell when something has Julie Sherman Wolf script it's going yeah. to be on a different level than the rest and, and the whole connection they had and they didn't even know it through his father Mm-hmm. Yeah. She, was, yeah she was the nurse she, that was yeah. that really paid off um and Victoria. another thing about this movie too is that it looks good and they were they were stuck in that house during covid yeah. so it doesn't even look like there are some movies during that time where you can mm-hmm. tell because yeah of or COVID. you can see the um the yeah i mean so this was filmed before covid i think no they were on, on lockdown or was it yeah, not lockdown they Oh, was it? Okay. They were like, because it was it, released in 2020. Yes, but they uh, had to, they were on, when I say lockdown is they were all together just in that building. They couldn't associate oh, okay. in that house. It's but the, they didn't have the, the COVID screen on for the kiss. I hate that. No, that this one didn't. No. I, hate I think that. the only one that, I mean, I don't even know if Hallmark did that. I know Lifetime did that. Lifetime did it and it was terrible and I hated and it. You we could were, tell, you could tell because they didn't <laughs> sink. I mean, I know we, what they, they we tried. were just we were just talking about it with Farmer Seeking Love, which ended up I think on um, BYU TV uh-huh. or anyway uh, with Donna, and uh, they had the film in there, and you can totally see because they have to when they film the kiss, it has to be done from this like bizarre angle to not show the film, and uh, and it just is awful. Um, I but, think they uh, were doing the spray for Hallmark. I remember so, one of the actors talking yeah. about they that had makes a spray more sense. that they were yeah. That makes that they sense. sprayed in their mouth. I mean, if, if somebody is, has been tested, they're, they're in that close proximity anyway, yeah. having the film is, so the whole thing was just stupid, <laughs> but, um, but, uh, they, they, they pulled that off. Uh, they did. Yeah. A, this was because it looks effective. good. It doesn't look empty. It doesn't look void. 
Yeah. Of, well, uh, and it kind people. of has, like, it was a perfect film for that year in a lot of ways because the, the fact they're sort of forced to spend all this time together in this yeah. house, you know, they're yeah. sort of isolated from the world. Like that kind of has sort of COVID-y kind of vibes, but it was. Yeah. Yeah. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Walmart Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. Um, and it has Victoria Clark as the mom and she just won a, won a Tony. So amazing Yay. for Kimberly Kimbo. Uh, Didn't so, he win a Tony that year too that this came out for Moulin Rouge? He did, yeah. Yeah, he did. Oh, oh yeah. That. yeah. I don't even know. Oh, I remember. I think I remember he was the only one nominated in that yeah. category, right? And I was like, just give it to him already. Why do you want <laughs> to make him wait for the yeah. ceremony? Yeah, it was he's so funny. good. He's so, so good. good. I, I hope to see him back. Movies. Yeah, I hope to see him back at Hallmark. Uh, you know. uh, yeah, he's great. I and that's the that. one thing too about um, the uh, stars from like Broadway and even the soap stars that come on because yeah. they know how to work in such a quick time frame yeah. and a limited time frame and with the barest of conditions at times. Mm -hmm. So they can really adapt fairly quicker than somebody who's not used to that sort of environment yeah. of working very quickly of well, yeah. like and less you, stuff around yeah and if you think about like broadway stars like they're going live every, every night, night yeah you know so there's that energy of the performance and i think that the yeah you see that here and uh i i think it was just probably also helped by the fact that they were they were i was, we're probably super just happy to be employed <laughs> absolutely like a joy at that time, right like, because a job, yay. I, I do remember them saying at the time like we have work because yeah broadway was shut work. down and yeah they were unemployed like uh many of us were at that time yeah that was horrible oh, that was God. awful i hope uh, to never live through something like that again i know me too uh so this one is my favorite it's my number one i think it's the best written it has sort of all the elements that I want. Like I said, the dress reveal, the yeah. chemistry, the Cinderella aspects. Also this, this movie did snow so well. So like, well, you remember yeah. that whole scene where there's like literally a wall of snow that, that she's walking along. And I'm like, how did they do this in like, I assume like August or uh, September, like they did a great job with snow in this movie. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, it looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Given really, the conditions that they were yeah. at with filming and the limited, yep. the limitations they had during that time, it mm -hmm. looks really good. Yeah. Yeah. So you have crown for Christmas number one. Yep. Yeah. So why is it your favorite? That one is my, again, because it's just the simplicity of it. It's kind of old school in, in storytelling and, and even the story itself. Like uh, there's so, how many Christmas movies have we seen where a guy falls in love with somebody who's taking care of his kid or you know helping that out because you know poor him his wife died uh, you know uh yeah so it's it's kind of the familiarity of that is very comforting and mm -hmm. i love it i try to watch it every year yeah there's just something that i enjoy so much about they worked so well together mm -hmm. and i love the end when they're on the horse you know yeah. oh i, I mean they, they don't that. have yeah they don't have like a, a lot of sets they don't have sparseness or that but they do a lot with what they have mm -hmm. and that scene at the end with the horse I mean it's great it has a lot of these like uh, like these romance like flicks here and there that you're like mm -hmm. oh you know like you can fangirl about if you want to yeah I <laughs> love that ending with the horse it's so oh good. yeah it's like so yeah. great and you know it's like and I think a pretty good dress moment here Yes, red looks really good on her. Yeah, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it was a nice moment. Oh, and a great like. Um, I guess she's thirsty for you know to be queen, but like a great like, 
Oh yeah, like the, the villain. Yeah. yeah. I, I I don't know if she's quite a villain because I think the advisor is more of the villain of this piece, you know. Oh yeah. Because you and also I like that he is an actual character. Like you you see him struggling with you know, am I doing right by mm-hmm. my daughter? You mm-hmm. know, my wife mm-hmm. has passed away. What am I going to do for my country? So he actually has real development as well. Yeah. Um and so, you know, but like mm-hmm. Got a great lady I trying to get Robert in there. Henry you know? Jones. Oh. And he's never done anymore. And I would think like <laughs> I love him in that persuasion though, too. Oh my gosh. He's so I've been a, a fan of his. That man never ages, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I have been a fan of his like for years. Like, because yeah. I love uh I'm an Anglophile. I love all these British things. <laughs> I love costume drama. So you know I've watched all of his costume dramas. He was and in the new Batman. Did you see that? No, I haven't seen the new Batman. It's a yet. small world, but he's yeah. In there. So, but like, of course, I, of course, you know, I saw per- the Persuasion. That's my favorite version of that uh, book. Yeah. And I, uh, I mean, like, he never ages. He's mm-hmm. ageless. <laughs> and I was like, wow, you know, because he's blonde, and not to say yeah. nothing, but like, okay, I'm just gonna say it out there: a white blonde man, you know, sometimes they don't age that well. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And he <laughs> is, for, you know, not everybody, not everybody, yeah. but. He is forever ageless for me and he still looks so good. I'm like, wow. He's you know. got good genes. Let's put Absolutely it that way. Absolutely good genes. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I wish he would do more because I know they filmed this, I believe in England that they filmed this. So he was mm-hmm. you know, right there. But I, I I, was hoping that he would do like more, you know, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Sometimes it's a blessing with these um, international productions because you can really get those actors who have never appeared come on you know and and do a yeah, go at which it. is the one of these that you would want to see a sequel if you were Ooh. well i'm gonna have to take crown out of that because we're never gonna get a sequel now since danik has gone yeah uh, i don't know i don't know if any of them merit a sequel because I, I i'm think afraid you gotta, I, I i'm think afraid you, a sequel would ruin it i think you gotta go with the royal nanny give her another case oh yes yeah i feel like that's the one you're right because he could he could be tagging along and yeah. ruining her case because he's so high profile you're right that one works the best mm-hmm. in that aspect but i think the others i think a sequel i'm so weary with sequels when it comes because you know yeah it'd be like oh, because because yeah. you know what happens they'll come back and they'll be like that didn't that love story didn't work out here's my new love yeah. like the um like what if you had like the Royal Nanny to a scandal in Fiji or something like that. And it was like, <laughs> they were over there and there was like somebody that was trying to like steal the Royal Jewels or something like that. Oh, and absolutely. Yeah. You know, they got to go for an event <laughs> and then they're like, oh no, I've got the guard. Yeah. Go crazy. Go yeah. absurd. It worked. Yeah. It worked the first time. I, I, I we're available, Hallmark. <laughs> 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 but yeah i think that one has probably is the the most potential or you know what we could go really crazy and say hey man it didn't work out but here's another royal prince <laughs> oh <laughs> she gets she gets a, a, oh no no she goes into another country because she's an expertise from you know how she <laughs> saved the royal family in england right and she goes uh-huh. to, let's say greece or whatever because it's a, an alternate reality and she's got to protect the 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 royals of uh or what if they were to get and he comes yeah he comes along and there's a trilogy uh, i mean there's a triangle she can't choose between two. <laughs> oh, that would be good or princes. what if they get married and the like niece and nephew want to get into uh espionage crime right solving. who's going to give and, up that crown though and what you know <laughs> who's going to give uh, up the crown and so you could one? have like but who better who would people suspect less of being a, a secret agent than the actual princess right yeah nobody would expect expect that right. and uh and so yeah so you could have her training the new princess on how to be a spy that could be fun the princess spies <laughs> <laughs> that would be good oh my god it would be that might be a little too late to develop this year with the writer's strike but maybe next year yeah maybe fingers crossed yeah i think uh, the uh, yeah uh we can brooke durham is the one who is the writer so brooke if you're listening call us up 
<laughs> Let's do the princess spy. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so there we go. Let us know what your ranking would be if you want to do a post or a video or whatever uh, with your ranking. I'll put all the 11 in the description. We would love to see that. Uh, and you put in the comments. And Terry, where can people find you? Uh, I'm on Twitter. And that's and, it, you know. Yeah. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all over social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. Check that out. Also, make sure that you are following the podcast, the Home Peace Pod and Home Peace Podcast, all over social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That really, really helps us a lot. And it only takes a second of your time. And uh, if you are watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. And then we also have the patron group, which is super fun. You get to be a part of watch alongs and other activities and exclusive reviews. Take a look at that. And then we also have the merch store. So check that out. And, you know, I think Terry, we, this was so much fun that we not only need to do the non holiday yes. Hallmark Royal ranking, but I think we got to do a non Hallmark Royal ranking with like the Christmas Prince. Oh boy. Yeah, like, Netflix. Because we've got like Netflix. We've got Netflix. <laughs> we've now Up TV has joined in. Yeah. And yep. we have, have you ever seen any from the Ion? From the Ion TV? I saw the one with Cindy Busby. Oh my gosh. It was. Uh, oh, and we also have, I don't know, we probably can't, but you can watch him <laughs> at other, I was going to say on uh, the uh, Great American Family, whatever, but you can watch those, I think, on a Usually another, on Tubi. They're on Yes, Tubi you can find them. And on another, if you don't want to support the channel, yeah. you can find those in yeah. in other realms, but like. Yeah, I think that would be fun. Or at least to, at the very least do a Netflix one. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> the Netflix one. I mean, they're all intertwined, so. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Because there's all the ones with Vanessa Hudgens. There's only six on Netflix, so. Because there's the Christmas Prince ones, and then there's Eight. the Vanessa Hudgens ones. Right. Or it's a switch yeah and then Once. they're all connected even the though the, i don't know if the knight counts as royal no but he's connected into the world because um <laughs> they're watching his movies on the they're show. all next they're all fake countries next door to each other uh <laughs> by the south fun. of france <laughs> that would be enough six seven yeah that'd be enough to do ranking but anyway uh let us know what you think if you like this uh and again what your rankings are and uh thanks this is so much fun and Merry Christmas, everybody. Bye. Merry Christmas. Bye. <laughs>